Deputy Conservative Party Leader Melissa Lansman humiliates the other parties for their decision to play politics with the India affair. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. I'll give you a quick rundown. The RCMP leveled accusations against the Indian government that Justin Trudeau handled poorly with zero tact or, or diplomacy causing for some uh, destruction of ties between the two countries. However, the allegations are still there, and there needs to be an investigation into it. So the NDP, McGregor, MB McGregor, called and had a what's called a 106. So now the committee that is the um, public safety and security are going to start to take a look at this, and they called in all of these witnesses and they were about to leave the room when the same MP McGregor introduced a motion to force Pierre Polyev to have uh, to be forced to take the top security clearance now I'll tell you straight the more that Justin Trudeau would want me to do something the less likely I would be willing to do it now you got Justin Trudeau you got Green Party leader Elizabeth May, you got the NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, and you have the Bloc Québécois leader all demanding that Pierre Polyev take this security clearance. And of course, it's not in his best interest. However, when the MP McGregor introduced this as a motion, the Conservatives introduced a amendment to the motion demanding that the 11 names of the what I'll call traitors that are sitting in the House of Commons, we want to know who they are. And of course, that caused all the parties except for the conservatives to go into almost meltdown. Now, Melissa Lantzman got her turn to speak on the microphone and she just completely, like, I mean, if I was, and if I was anybody, I would be like, man, this, uh, this, the way this makes me sound is terrible. Now I tried to cut it up, but really everything that she says is kind of relevant and kind of important. And uh, so I'm just going to let you hear it and it's full. It's, it, it's an entirety because it's, it's, uh. It's well, it makes a great point. All right. Uh, I, thanks, Mr. Chair. Well, while I appreciate members of this committee thinking that the motion is out of order because they don't like it, that's, that's not exactly how it works. <laughs> and I think what we're seeing now here uh, at this committee is that, that there's only one party in this country uh, that is calling for the release of this name and every for the release of these of these names, the names that uh, the prime minister has alluded to, the names that we know are are being kept secret. And everyone else is trying to work to hide the names, particularly the changing stories of uh, of Miss May since before and after she uh, she she read the briefings uh, or, or she was briefed in. Now we see that the NDP um, are, are trying to distract from what was brought to this committee as a serious issue today, a ser- the serious issue of foreign interference by, by India, and, and they're now playing politics with it. Um, listen, listen to this. I agree completely with Polyev's decision not to take the bait. Trudeau has been trying for a year and a half to restrain what Pierre Polyev can do by trying uh, – by trying to say, um, come and get this private briefing. And oh, by the way, then you'll be held to an official secret and that you won't be able to talk about this anymore. Do you know who said that, Mr. Mr. Chair? That was Thomas Mulcair. That, that, That was the leader of the NDP when the NDP used to be an opposition party that wasn't helping the liberals cover this up. The question is, is what is the government trying to hide? Now, for everybody watching, uh, they might not know that the CSIS Act allows the government to offer information to any Canadian about specific risks of foreign interference without forcing them into sworn secrecy or controlling what they say. But this motion particularly is about releasing the names that Canadians deserve to know of any parliamentarian in any party that has been wittingly uh, uh, associated uh, with foreign interference, with a foreign government working against the interests of Canadians. But receiving a secret uh, uh, briefing um, 
would even according to the the prime minister's chief of staff would would prevent the recipient from using that information in any manner now i don't think that's very smart for an opposition uh party uh, one that only exists uh the only opposition party that exists to 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 come to force the prime minister to come clean with canadians uh in uh, in in what he is trying to hide this Facts. this this particular uh, this particular motion that was dropped at uh, at committee makes a mockery the same kind of mockery uh, that uh, that the Trudeau government has repeatedly made with foreign interference. What we witnessed uh, at uh, at the public inquiry this week was nothing more uh, than well rehearsed. Uh, partisan smears um, by a failing prime minister who is facing rejection from Canadians from coast to coast and increasingly from his own Liberal Party, ones that are writing, having letter writing campaigns to oust him from his leadership. And it is beyond rich uh, for the prime minister to grandstand, given the record uh, that his government has shown on not taking foreign interference uh, uh, seriously um, with all of the benefits of, of the government agencies that he has with all of the information that he was that he was warned with, uh, including uh, in, in the Liberal Party and the fact that he refused to act. It is this prime minister uh, and, and his government who repeatedly claimed that they weren't aware of foreign interference happening right under their noses, despite a massive paper trail of, of warnings from uh, from officials. It is. Justin Trudeau's government, uh, which mysteriously sat, as we learned from uh, the inquiry last week, on CISA surve- uh, a CISA surveillance warning, um, uh, a warrant application for a liberal power broker for 54 days, and still there is no answers about that. The minister says he doesn't know. Uh, other ministers say that he doesn't know. There are staffers who, who gave absolutely no answers at, uh, at that commission. It is Justin Trudeau's party who willingly allowed uh, Chinese high school students to vote in the now infamous uh, Han Dong nomination uh, race, and that was that was fine. Um, it was Justin Trudeau who ignored calls from the leader of uh, of the opposition to release those names to Parliament. He has repeatedly done that, and now the entire country is asking for those names. You cannot go to the committee under the under the guise of providing information, uh, drop that kind of partisan uh, partisan smear job on uh, on 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 members of uh, of parliament and then not come clean with the names. And the only people that are looking to have those names uh, uh, told to the Canadian public is the Conservative Party. Uh, there is we're fighting now every single party that is working with Justin Trudeau and his government to cover up these names. And Canadians deserve to know. Canadians deserve to know which members of parliament in which party, no matter what, are colluding with foreign governments wittingly or unwittingly. And, uh, you know, unlike others who are willing to uh, to limit their ability to to hold government to uh, account on on important issues of, of national security, conservatives will not do that. And uh, Mr. Polyev will not be get left, you know, uh, under a gag order and left unable to speak uh, about any of the information he receives. Uh, but all of that to say that these names have to have to come out um, and they have to be to, and, and there's only one person who can do that. And that's the prime minister of Canada. The government through CSIS is authorized by a particular section in the CSIS Act. Uh, it's, it's section 12.1. He could act at any time to utilize threat reduction measures to notify the leader of a political party of issues concerning national security. He did not do that. Instead, he chose to make it public in, a, in, a, in an inquiry and cast aspersions uh, with absolutely no evidence and no follow through on, on letting Canadians know who those people are, who those members of parliament is. This tool has been available to his government since he, since he started, since 2015. The, the, he, he could use that tool to inform Mr. Polyev, and, and, and he's not doing that. All of that, 
All of that to say is that the motion on the table is to release the names. Again, there is one party asking for uh, for this prime minister to release every single one of those names and the other parties uh, that are purportedly in opposition, helping the prime minister hide those names, hide the identities of all of those members of parliament. The question really is to, to the entire committee is what on earth are you hiding? What is the prime minister hiding? Uh, I think that's the question that we have to get to the bottom of in this committee. And I, 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 I hope that members will vote for this amendment to make those names public for the, for the betterment of our national security and for every Canadian to know who represents them and for every Canadian to know ahead of the next election who they are actually voting for, which country they are working for, and if they have Canadian best interests at, uh, at heart. And only the prime minister can do that. Everything else is pure politics. That's what we've seen this week. And unfortunately, that's what we're seeing right now at this committee. And I, I tell you, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, I want the names released. And I believe that in any of these members who think that just, uh, excuse me, that Pierre Polyev should get the security clearance should also feel that the release of the names is, is imperative. Now, they lost their minds when the amendment was added. Like, you know, go ahead and lose your mind. You're always losing your mind. But you, the more you resist it, the more you're obviously hiding something. Now, we've heard from the far left saying that, oh, no, no, if he doesn't get it, that's because he doesn't care about the security of the country. And yet the CSIS Act, the Home Security Act, I think it's called, is per- permits people to tell them if there's something imperative that's going on. Canadians have the right to know who these people are. We want to know who the names are. We want to see the unredacted documents. We want It's enough of the corruption of this government. They're always hiding something. They're always offering excuses. They're always throwing, and the NDP helped them hide that, and they're still helping them hide that. I think that um, Ms. Lanceman said it very well. I think that um, MP Dancho also said it very well when she was speaking. I mean, there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of uh, very uh, caustic and hostile things said in efforts to try and, and stop the conservatives from adding this amendment. I mean, remember, they were out the door. The, the chair was in the middle of saying, we're adjourned. He said, we're adjourned. And he was this far away from tapping it down. And the MP McGregor said, wait, 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 my hand is up. And then he introduced this new motion to have Pierre Pauly to try and think that they can get an end run around making, forcing Pierre Pauly to get this security clearance. But when you have all of these parties, especially the NDP and the liberals trying to get him to do something, my, my whole mind just says that there's no way in the world that him doing it is good for him. It can't be. Because if it was, the Liberals and the NDP and now the Greens and the Bloc wouldn't be pushing for it. Now, truthfully, the Bloc didn't weigh in very much on the second motion, second amendment, and sometimes they, they, they go back and forth, though they did have a representative there in the meeting. They, um, she, she didn't speak to this as yet. Now, they, they, they're, they've adjourned until Tuesday, and that's the other thing. Even though the chair was halfway out the door, he was like, oh, no, no, I'm going to allow this motion. And that's kind of playing politics with it as well, right? So here we have, on the one hand, people talking about the security of the country, India is bad, this and that, and this, that, this, that, and the other thing. But oh, well, while we're at it, let's just try and take this and see if we can't force Pierre Polyev to stop talking by, you know, who knows what they're going to throw in that report. Oh, as soon as they make him take that re- that that um, security clearance, how do you know they're not going to say, well, you can't talk about housing anymore. You can't talk about the economy anymore. That's, that's uh, you know, top secret. You don't know what what the tricks they're, they're going to try to pull off. I certainly wouldn't trust them, especially when they're all trying to gang up on him. Anyway, that's my opinion. You can let me know what your opinion is down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.